All right, Shalom. Shalom. All right, we want to start off this video by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakai Kodash. Double honor to the apostles, elders of Great Millstone, who we will. Peace and blessings to the whole for elect. All right, we want to say Shalom. Shalom. All right, it's the Shalom. All right, we're coming back with another uh, lesson in the spirit. Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Lord willing, this is edifying. Uh, the other day, me and the uh, Ox, we was, um, we was on a uh, live stream. Or is that what's called? Yeah, come. live stream, and uh, we was bringing our lesson, and we was uh, going to talking about um, how Peter means rock, and um, what happened was at that time it just sparked something in my head uh, to jump on reincarnation because this is something that it was kind of it wasn't shocking when I heard it, but it was shocking because it was true because I always felt that way as a as a kid or as an adolescent, even still now sometimes when you feel like damn I had deja vu. You know, so I feel like that's the that's the uh, the Lord, the Most High. You know, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, giving you like a glimpse, you know, of 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 what is to happen or what happened. Uh, but long story short, uh, you know, throughout the scriptures, it's gonna it's gonna continually, continually um, let you know about reincarnation. Okay, so um, this, if 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 the spirits on you to receive it. All right, so I'm not gonna try to get too meaty behind it. Uh, we're gonna pull a few precepts, and Lord willing, is that a fine? God. All right, we we'll start off with um, John chapter eight and verse fifty-six. John chapter eight and verse fifty-six. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him. Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Verse 58, John 8 and 58. Yahweh Shai said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Right, so, how, you know, th what they're saying is, he, he's saying, how are you yet, 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 not even fifty years old, but you're saying that you've seen Abraham, because that's way before your time. Right. Right? And then Yahweh Shai says, hey, trust me, very, very, I say unto you that I've seen him, right, right. That, 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 that I know who he is. Right. All right? So like you, he, Yahweh Shai really said, I was there before Abraham. Come on, come on. So he's saying Abraham, Abraham came after, after me. me. Come on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, so that right there. Oh, so like I'm gonna read the next verse real quick. Come on, so. come on. Verse 59, because you, you have to keep in mind, Abraham is our forefather. You know, he was a friend of the Most High God. Through Abraham, you had Isaac and Jacob, right? So you have to understand the importance of Abraham and how much of a great man he was. And he said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Meaning Abraham was happy to see Yahweh Shai, right? And then when he said, before Abraham, I was. So basically, he exalted himself over Abraham. And he wasn't lying. He wasn't lying. But watch, this is how you know Abraham is a key figure or he meant something to the nation of Israel at that time. Even now, because watch, verse 59. Then they took up stones to cast at him. But Yahweh Shai hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. So they tried to stone him right then and there. They was like, Yo, who the hell does this nigga think he is? Man? Right, con. You know? <laughs> you know what I mean? God, that makes sense. That just goes to show you how much great that how much of a great man Abraham was. You know, I right, said try to exalt yourself over him. Right. All right, con. And that, that's 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 the power point there. So yeah, you know, uh, and I'm glad that you broke it down that way. Yeah, um, as you said, um, uh, going back to I believe that was verse uh, mm, oh 58 when he says before Abraham uh, was I am like you said. So he he's been there, man. Right. All right. That's that's reincarnation, man. Because uh -huh. how could he in that same physical body have seen Abraham? Right. Right. All right. So uh, reincarnation is true, man. Right. It's the same thing throughout the scriptures, man. What the scriptures say? Say, uh, uh, there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah, Khan. You want me to get that? Khan, Baba Kafa. All right. It's Ecclesiastes. I got Genesis on deck too. Khan. It's Ecclesiastes one, starting at verse nine. It says, "The thing that hath been is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun." Khan. Is there anything? Whereof it may be said, see, this is new. It hath, it hath already been of old time, Con. which was before us. Con. 
you know? No problem. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. The thing that has been is that which shall be. Would you read that again? The thing that has been is that which shall be. Which is the thing that shall is that which ha which shall be. Right, right. The question was understanding where did he come in? And then I can help you explain and help you understand and read that one again. I got you. Ecclesiastes one and nine. The thing that has been is it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. You know, so that's so you're thinking that was something new, but it wasn't. Right, it is of old. Right. In a new time. Exactly. Now you on the same old earth, but right now they're coming in with a new world order, meaning that they're changing the times. Right, 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 right. And you see in these times was written concerning the times. Mm -hmm. These times was labeled as the last days. So it had to be the first days. Exactly, exactly. That's why you mentioned the first and the last. Right. And brought it all in one. Right. All right, but that's also at the same time why the scriptures say uh, that, you know, the Lord is Alpha and Omega, man, the beginning God. and the ending. God. All right, so, you know, this is just all a movie. One. All right. in one. Yeah. This Ancient the days. All in one. You want me to get Genesis? Come on, sure. What was that, Genesis what? That's a lot. 13? I think. Or 15? You might be right now. Yeah, yeah, man. 13. That's right. That's right. It's, it's re reincarnation is biblical, you know? People think that it's... 13. Uh, yeah, okay. Genesis 13 and verse 18. Bouncing back off the point of uh, Melchizedek. Genesis 13 and 18. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, which Salem means peace, you know. Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Blessed be the Most High God which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. You know? So that's it right there. Right. Can you can you can you go back to eighteen really quick? Gone. Genesis top. Genesis uh thirteen and or sorry, like Genesis fourteen and eighteen. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the most high power. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham, Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thine hand, and he gave him tithes of all. Right, so when it, uh, you know, that Melchizedek, that king of Salem, hey, that's Yahweh Shai, man. Right. All right. Um, Yahweh Shai is the king of all kings, man. It says, and he was the priest of the Most High Yahweh. All right, and obviously we know that the Levites were the, you know, the, uh, the, the priesthood, and now technically we're all priests right now. <laughs> um, <Jeez. laughs> Yeah, that's right. And 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 guess what, man? The Most High told Yahweh Shai in Psalms 110, he said, what? You are a priest after the order of Melchizedek, man. Mm. You know? But you, you got Hebrews? You want me to get Hebrews? Yeah, come on, baby. Because, oh, like seven. It. Yeah, because that's going to put it in perspective, man. You know? Bouncing back off the, the first scripture we brought out through the Spirit, what was that? John 8? Yep. He said, what? Verily, before Abraham, I was, you know? That's, so let's get this. This is Hebrews chapter 7 starting at verse 1 for this Melchizedek king of Salem priest of the most high God who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all which is tithing, tithing fine. being first being by interpretation king of righteousness right Melchizedek Malak Tazadak you know uh, king of righteousness to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Verse 3, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. All his eyes. That's it right there. You know? Verse 4, now consider how great this man was. Unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. So, like I said earlier, through the Spirit, you know, hey, you have to consider how great Abraham was. And if Abraham was to give Melchizedek tithes, that goes to show you how great Melchizedek was, man. Which is Yahweh Shai in the reincarnation, you know. That's what made Melchizedek greater. To see, just to see what Abraham did for him. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Correct. That's facts. Verse 4, now, uh, verse 5, And verily they that are of the sons of Levi, who received the office of the priesthood, 
have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law that is of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. Con, con. You know, it says, but he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. Right, so what does it mean that he who uh, was not descent of them received tithes of Abraham? Melchizedek wasn't necessarily of Abraham's descent. Okay, because it said what? Melchizedek had father, had no father, no mother. Why? Because the Lord just raised his spirit up. You know, the scriptures say how the Lord can raise up stones to uh to, to prophesy. You know, that's that goes to show you the power of the most high. You know, so that's what he did with Melchizedek, who was Yahweh Shai. He just basically gave him an incarnation, so to speak, you know. He can just raise you up, you know what I mean? Verse uh Seven, and without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. All right. And here men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them on whom it is witness that he liveth. Right. Because <clears throat> the, the Levites who are the priests, they die. You know, they live in carnal bodies. But Yahweh he lives. He's still alive. You know, scriptures say he's risen. You know, like the Apostle Paul said, he said, who died. But yeah, rather is risen. You know, Yahweh died, but the Lord raised his spirit up again. And, and so, Lucky, if you go back to verse 3, what it says, it says, uh, neither beginning of days nor end of life. Khan, Khan, right. Because Yahweh Shai, his spirit has been there, man. Khan. You know, spirit has been there, man. All right. Um, and what, uh, verse 9. And as I may say so, Levi, also who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. <laughs> So the Apostle Paul is taking a jab at Levi, man, who are the priests, okay? And it's not, he's not necessarily disrespecting the Levites. He's just saying, like, this is how much greater Melchizedek is compared to the Levites, you know? They're giving him tithes. Right, you know? Because he said, what? Levi paid tithes to Melchizedek in Abraham. And, and, and they're supposed to be the ones collecting the right. tithes. Right, exactly, exactly. So, you know, it's all through the Spirit, okay? Verse, verse 10, for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. So he's basically saying he wasn't even a, he was, he, like, you know how no. back in the world, your parents say, you weren't even you thought of at yet. that time. Yeah, kind. You know, it's the same thing with Levi. Exactly. Shalom, 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 shalom. 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 Yes. You know, uh, you you want me to finish off on that or you want me to, um, uh, I'll finish, I'll get a couple more precepts in there. Fine. There's one more scripture. Con, um, con. Yeah, you can keep going. All right, this is um, Hebrews 7 and verse 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should arise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? You know, basically saying what? If, if we were perfect through the first covenant, which is by way of the Levitical priesthood, why did another priest have to arise? Right, con. You know? Which is Yahweh Shai. He is that high priest, man. Like the same thing like with the first covenant. That's why we got to have that second covenant. Right. Like because it says in Hebrews, the eighth chapter. I'll get that real quick. Or oh, you mind getting that for me, Atif? Hebrews um, chapter eight. I believe it's like um, was uh, it at eight, starting at eight. You can start at verse um, six. six. Seven, okay, six. Okay, okay, sure. Yeah, come. Come. All right, this is Hebrews chapter eight, verse six. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if that the first covenant had been faultless, there should no place have been sought for the second. All right, because you got to think about it, man. You know, as soon as, we, as, soon as those, those that covenant was written, hey, you, what, what happened when, um, when Moses was coming back down from, uh, from, the, from the mountain, man? Jake was going off. Jake was going off. What, he, what is it? He, he, uh, like, like, okay, you remember like back in the day at your grandma's house and you seen the Moses movie and he'll be holding the two tabernacles and they kind of look like they split. And that came from when he came down. He was like, what the hell going on? Like, he just dropped them. Like, oh, yeah, like hey, man, Jake going off bad, man. They was down there making uh, molten cow. That's making that golden, <clears throat> that golden molten cow um, of, 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 of earrings and uh, things like that, okay. right? And, hey, man, they all had to toss that away. And that's another thing for two if you, for you people out there saying that you can't have earrings. You can't have, uh, you know, earrings. Right, right, right. Yep, con. You know? But um, you, you kept reading on the Hebrews 8? Yeah, he just stopped that. I was kind of breaking it down. Con. Uh, um, he's at, you going to verse 8, right? Yeah, con. Okay, con. All right, this is Hebrews 8, verse 8. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come. Salakia. Can you start at verse 7? Salakia. This is Hebrews 8 and verse 7. 
For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Right. Meaning, if we were faultless, because the, the, the law is perfect, it was us who broke that covenant, you know? The scriptures say many times again that we were the ones who broke the covenant, man. And it's going to tell you in the next scripture. Verse 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Proves to show you what? Broken up. Salvation is only for is Israel. Israel. <clears throat> exactly. That leads the new covenant, you know what I mean? <laughs> Great. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they contended not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. And, and that's to show you that, you know, that just that separation when it says Israel and Judah, northern and the southern kingdom. Come, come. All right, but it's simply going to tell you how we're going to come into, we're going to come into one, um, uh, you know, one, one, stick. one stick. Come, yep, come. Verse 10, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a power, and they shall be to me a people. Khan. Khan. You want to break that down? Oh, Khan. So verse 10. Verse 10. All right. So basically what the Akio said earlier, like, salvation is only for Israel. Right. And once he writes his laws in our minds, we'll never be able to go off again. Right. And sin is our only weakness. The only uh. thing that makes us go, that takes us away from our power is sin. Right. That will be no more once it's written into us. It will be impossible for us to sin. Uh, exactly. Exactly. So renewing the, 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 the inward part. So and no man's going to have to ask who Yahweh Shai is, who Yahweh uh, is. Uh, you're gonna, everybody's going to know the name. Uh, Niggas is not going to be out here sloppy. Not going to be out here playing with the Lord's name like y'all do now. Yeshua, Yahweh, doing all that now. And you're going to know. Right. Ain't going to be needed to ask Jake for his YouTube channel. Or <laughs> nothing like that. Uh, not saying that that's going off. It's yeah, just nah, we're not right, going to have to teach him the kingdom. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, oh, uh, that's the next verse. Watch it. God. Verse 11, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. From the least to the greatest. Fucking heathen, all the way up to to uh, King David and 144. Uh, uh, that would have that been the right order, right? It would have been. Right, right. Yahweh Shai. Yahweh, Yahweh, yep, yep. Yahweh Shai, King David. The 12. The 12, the 144. Right, and then the rest of the one third. Uh -huh. Yeah, like the brother said, even the heathen's gonna know the Lord because when it tells you in Isaiah the second chapter, it says what they all gonna come to the house of the Most High and worship Him, man. And also in Micah the fourth chapter, you know. So, um, you want me to get that last precept? All right, come. We're gonna go to John fourteen and fourteen. Uh, Job. Oh, Job, Salakia. Job. My you want to read up? This is Job chapter 14 and verse 14. If a man die, shall he live again? Wow. Mm. All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Till my change come. So he said it right there. If a man die, shall he live again? Yeah. With a question mark. Right. Huh. You know, and he said what? All the days I will wait until my, until my appointed time come. Huh. Why is that? Because there is literally an appointed time when you come back in the reincarnation. Huh. You know, and it's roughly about 75 to 100 years. You know, that's the that's the rule of thumb, so to speak. Like the scriptures say, the Lord visits the iniquity of the fathers upon the third and fourth generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's the appointed time, man. Matter of fact, let's prove that Job is going to come back in the reincarnation. Let's go to the 19th chapter real quick. Let's yeah. prove it because Job Job knew he was going to come back, man, through the spirit. This is You want to get it, my Akala? Job 19, starting at verse uh, 25? Yeah, Come on, I knew that was going Yes, sir. Uh, not right now. Sorry about that. Oh, oh, I will. <laughs> this is Job chapter 19 and verse 25. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Wow. And so after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my that. flesh shall I see Yahweh. Right, so so Job saying, hey, he knows that he knows that uh, uh Yahweh Shai lives, man. That the latter day, man, he's gonna stand up in the earth when when the judgment comes, man. God. Right, uh, for Babylon primarily, man, you're gonna see that happen, right? And he knows that's why Job says, after my skin, uh, worms destroy the body, right? Because the 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 physical body is destroyed, 
but the spirit is lifted. I prove that. I prove that real quick. What the brother just said. So, so, so Job understood reincarnation. So, right. You know, so that's why that's hey, that's why you know, like perfect to come to this chapter. Go ahead, go on. It's Ecclesiastes twelve and seven. Then shall the dust return to the earth as Woo! it was. And the spirit shall return unto the Most High who gave it. Yep, gone. That's, that, that's, and, and that's plain and simple. The spirit is going to return to who gave it. And the physical body is going to go into the dust. Where, As you know, what you see in all these movies every time in the casket. You see worms, bugs, and all this other shit, man. Right. We're not worried about the physical body. Gone. We're not worried about the physical body. Right. And then that, that cuts hell, too. Or so-called, what they people know as hell, that cuts hell. Uh -huh. It says the spirit returned back to the Most High. So the Most High turning in quote unquote hell. Nah. You know. Nah. Uh -huh. You know, or at least the hell that they think. Uh -huh. Right. Uh -huh. Because hell does exist, but it's not what they think. Hell is synonymous with the grave or underground, uh -huh. and it's also a condition or a state. You know uh, that a person may be in. Babylon. Right. You know. <laughs> but yeah. Um, that's it on that? Con, you know, you got something you want to throw on there? Uh, Con, I'm, I'm good. You got a precept box? You know, my alcohol is pulling out the Hold fire precepts. Con, you know I pull something off the cut. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I'll read it for you if you want me to. Yeah, man. So, hey, reincarnation is biblical, you know, and it's important. Uh, Ecclesiastes 3, 16. Con. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Con, con, con. I got you. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 16. Come. And moreover, I saw... Oh, can I start at verse 15? Come, come. The water. It says, Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 15. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. Mm -hmm. And the Most High requires that which is past. That's, re that's another reincarnation of scripture. Yeah, and that also goes to show you what? That you devils got to pay for what your forefathers did. Come. You know, like they like to say that wasn't me, that was my ancestor. I love that. You know? Hey, well, guess what? The Most High required that which is past. Verse 16. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. I mean, where is that? Under the sun. Right. Under, that's exactly right, bro. You know? It says... Um, and I said in my heart, the Most High shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time there and a, a, for every purpose and for every work, you know? But like the brother wanted to bring out, man, you know? Hey, what? He saw under the place of the sun, the place of judgment, man. Not that, not the quote-unquote afterlife. The quote-unquote afterlife, the spirit realm, that's where you get your sentence for judgment. But you live it out here on earth. Well, that's fine, fine. You know, because where are we at? We're we under the sun right now. And it says what? That iniquity was there and righteousness is there. Uh -huh. Not Lord willing, we'd be a part of the elect. But what we're doing right now is a righteous work. But what is Jake doing? Wickedness. You know, we, we come by Jake smoking and shit. So that goes to show you the scriptures is real, man. Uh -huh. This is the place of judgment, you know. But, um, yeah, that's... You got Because I was thinking about, um, as you said, you live, you live your judgment out on earth. Because Jake will say a lot of times... Um, and this is the, one of the very first things that out of the many questions I had when I first came into the truth. Why the hell does a so-called innocent or, you know, when you look at a, like a baby or something, you're like, oh, this is only three years old. Why the hell that baby died by a bullet? Point proven here. Like you said, you're going to live out your judgment on earth. Right. This is Job chapter 4 and uh, verse 7. Remember, I pray thee, whoever perish being innocent or were the righteous cut off. Right. Exactly, man. You know, whoever perish being innocent, man. What does it say? The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Yep. You know, the wages of sin is death. Yeah, so if you died, that's because you probably did something wicked in the past life or you did something wicked in this present life, man. That's a judgment. You know, and, and we all got to die because why? Back in our past lives, in the time of Adam, you know, when he went off, when we, you know, back in the sun, back in the garden when we were the sons of God, which we still are. Hey, what? We got to die. Because why? We were supposed to be, well, we we're going to get it back in the kingdom, but we were given the way to know righteousness and righteousness alone. But once we dipped off into that left-hand side, then we had to die, man. Let's get that real quick. This is Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, starting at verse 23. I'll wait for you. You got this? Come on. Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 23. For the Most High created man to be immortal. Talking about the Israelite man. 
all right, and made him to be an image of his own eternity. Like, like the scripture says in Genesis 1, we were created after the Lord's image, That's fine. you know. It says what? Nevertheless, through the envy of the devil, meaning you wanted to be wicked, you wanted to be evil, you know, through envy of the devil, man. Okay, because why? Right. Satan was created to be wicked. Esau was created to be wicked. So, like the scripture say, envy not thy oppressor, uh -huh. you know. So through envy of the devil came death into the world, mm -hmm. and they that do hold of his side do find it. Mm -hmm. You know, so if, hey, you hold on the side of wickedness, you're going to find death, man. Right. And we all had to find, we all are going to die because why? We, we found the side of wickedness, man. Right. Right. You know, but now, in the time that we're living now, Ooh, this is another reincarnation scripture. Because now, in the time that we're in now, what did the Lord say? There shall be there are some of us stand, well standing here that standing. shall not taste death. Thank you. I'm gonna read it and then I got you. You could you break that down. Right. This is Matthew, um, sixteen, and verse. Uh, oh man, what is that? I think it's Matthew sixteen. Taste death. Yeah, come on. Uh, yeah. Twenty-eight, sixteen, twenty-eight. Matthew 16 and 28. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here. And what was that? That was about 2,000 years ago when Yahweh was on the scene. Th that's red letter. It says, Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Oh, man. Th that's reincarnation right there. Oh. Because all them apostles died, died off. Died, right. The physical body was gone. Right. All them apostles died off. Peter was crucified. Apostle Paul got killed, you know. A lot of the apostles got killed, man. Murdered, you know. But that's the point, man. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? You got uh -huh. Yeah, because I mean, like I said, hey, I mean, that's pretty straightforward, man. Yahweh Side, red letter, telling you some of you that were standing near. He's not talking about us right now, because Yahweh Side wasn't was not standing here when he when this was written or said. You get what I'm saying? So as you said, this is two thousand plus years ago. Right. So so the average person that, that don't have that spiritual discernment or have the spiritual lenses, they're not able to digest what he's saying. Like, well, how do you, what do you mean? Some of you guys that are standing right here that's not tasting death. God. So you're saying that those men are 2,000 plus years old and the physical body still walking around? Right. Hell no. You know, Esau will be doing experiments on them and shit <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? Like, oh, what are you doing to stay alive 2,000 years? Oh, man. Bullshit. You know? But yeah, I think pretty much hey, that's, the, that's the point, though. Huh? Time. Hey, you know, yeah. reincarnation is real if you can receive it. Okay, uh, but when I got good news for you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. Hey, this is it. Time. This is it. So technically, technically, uh, would that be a reincarnation because our, our bodies are going to be cha uh, transformed in the twinkle of an eye? Right, I mean. Well, is that a still a form of reincarnation? Um, technically? Well, technically, two-thirds. Two-thirds coming back in the kingdom of reincarnation. Con, okay, yeah, so con, right, con, yep, because they're coming through the elect. Right. So you know what? I lied. Reincarnation is not over. Right. Right, and it, and it still won't be over because even in the kingdom, it's like the heathen are going to die. We're not going to die, but the heathen are. You know, so they're going to have to come back in their right order. Except, except for E. You know, but calm. Hey, that's the point. Um, You want to close that off here? Con, con. Uh, all right, so, um, you know, Lord willing, this video is edifying. All right, we're going to close out this video by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shad, Bashem, Akakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone who rule well. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. All right, until next time, we're going to say shalom. Shalom. And a ba ba ba. A ba ba ba.